Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm sort of going to show you some of the physics books that I have in my book collection and the books that I use to reference material and the books that I use to actually learn physics. Okay. And this is a video that I've been meaning to make for the last couple of years at least. And uh, thanks to one of the people that's been following us on YouTube, uh, they reminded me a couple of times that I had promised um, to put this video out. And this is, this is video is sort of a uh, result of that coming out at this point because I promised them as soon as we got back into a full-blown video editing production, uh, this was going to be the first, uh, one of the first videos that we're going to put out okay and uh, this is uh, related to a lot of content that we created in the past as well right because book recommendations is uh, one of the first types of questions that uh, started coming my way when i started putting out the language of mathematics videos and the f one of the first videos we put out actually i don't know if it was at the end of series one of the language of mathematics or it was the end of series two of the language of mathematics where i made uh, uh, five book recommendations because people at that time were asking me for math book recommendations right and since we've done a certain amount of physics since then uh, I promised that I would put out a physics book recommendation as well right because my background is really geophysics with a minor in mathematics I'm not math major I'm a physics major okay and uh, I sort of went through my book collection and pulled out the books that I have as references for physics and a couple of these books actually three four of these books that I have here are the books that I used way back in the day to learn physics okay now one of the books the main book that I have is one of the books that I showed in my first book recommendation videos right where uh, people were asking me to give them math book recommendations and I pulled out a math book uh, which I showed you guys and I pulled out this physics book okay the math book that I use and this is I'll show you this because math is just basically the, the foundation of physics really right so it's a good idea to have a math book handy as well if you're studying physics but this is my two go-to math book it has been for the last 30 years right and it's uh, calculus uh, Howard Anton third edition and this is, you know, the one of the books that I showed in my first book video recommendation, right? And it's a fantastic book. I have stuff bookmark, and I've gone through this through university years. I went through about seventy-five percent of this book, learning calculus, doing getting my math minor, right? So I have this handy. This is the book that I've referenced most in terms of math and physics sciences in my life okay uh, I still very much love it okay as far as my main physics books that I use to learn physics and what I reference okay this is one of the other books that I showed in that first video that we put out uh, about the math book collections and I believe it was in 2009 or something like this 2008 2009 maybe 2010 2009 though I believe so like 10 years ago right and this is physics for scientists and engineers with modern physics second edition and it's seaway okay this book I've probably referenced just as much as this next book that I'm going to show you this one probably more so I probably referenced this book more than any of the other physics books that I'm about to show you may be equivalent. The next book I'm going to show you is going to be equivalent to this one. Okay. And this book came out. When did this book come out? This is da, 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 da. copyrighted 1986. Okay. And the author for this is uh, Raymond A. Surway. Okay. Let me show you the name here just in case you want to look it up. So here's the info for this book. Okay, if you're interested in looking this up, um, is it a phenomenal book? It's what I learned physics on, right? 
I know where the information is. I know how to read this textbook because each test textbook really, um, I don't know if it's science, but even fiction, every textbook has sort of a rhythm to it, right? So I'm familiar with this rhythm. I'm familiar with this tone. So this is the book that I reference. Uh, I find it well enough for me, okay? Like I even have pieces of paper in here where I'm, you know, talking about magnetic fields and stuff like this. I have little things that I stuck in there that I drew just for me to appreciate what was going on, right? With magnetic fields, right? So I have little bits of notes in this, okay? And that's what something you need to do when you're learning, when you're acquiring a textbook that you're gonna be using for a long time. Bookmark it, put little notes in there, mark up the book if you need to or if you want to right highlight things i really haven't highlighted too much in this uh, because at the time i wasn't really into highlighting books and i didn't realize that this book was going to stay with me for like 30 years right uh, so this is my main one of my main two go-to books right for physics anyway the other book that i probably referenced just as much as this book is this one Fundamental Physics Second Edition uh, Extended, and it's Holiday and Resnick. Okay. This is the book. I hope you can read that fine. And again, with this one, I have things, areas that I've marked off, and some of these are marked off a long time ago, right? I got little notes in here. Um, and when you're looking to find a book let me find out when this was put out find a book that you're going to use uh, a lot and this one came out the last edition of this which is i believe this is the third edition this is the second edition the extended second edition is 1981 right so this guy was 1986 this guy is 1981 right so the age of the book really doesn't matter because physics what we know so far from the you know just introductory physics a lot of the stuff is preliminary preliminary physics where you encounter in grade 11 grade 12 uh, first year physics and second year physics right you haven't really specialized in anything yet because physics uh, specializes in things right you can learn the basic physics and then decide that you want to go into fluid dynamics you want to go into electromagnetic and magnetic methods you want to go into uh, specialize on a geophysics from going to seismic refraction and reflection or whatnot right so you can really narrow your focus when it comes to physics what we're talking about here really is an introduction to all the different disciplines in physics right but what we talked about previously a video that we put out uh, which was how to read a textbook right and in that video i sort of had uh, multiple points laid out of how I go about reading a textbook and what I find important to be in a textbook, right? So when you're choosing a textbook, may it be physics, may it be mathematics, may it be chemistry, may it be any other discipline that you want to study, what I personally look for is an extended large table of contents, right? Something that spans every chapter and gives you a nice overview of what's in those chapters and a extended, detailed bibliography, right? Or index, my apologies. Extended index where you can look up a certain field, right? When you wanna look up a certain topic and find out exactly which pages that information can be found, right? So if you're choosing, uh, you know, or trying to choose a textbook that you're gonna learn from and hopefully keep with you for decades. And again, this one has been with me for 30 years as well, just as long as this one, right? So if you're trying to find a book that you're gonna keep in your book collection, that is a discipline that you wanna study for an extended period of time, make sure those books have a nice table of contents and a nice index, right? And what's inside 
uh, is something that you can relate to that you find easy to read you like the rhythm uh, the flow of the information right and it is very personal and the other thing that we mentioned in that video where we put out uh, you know how to read a textbook what I personally look for when it comes to physics and sciences in general I look for detailed drawings right this is something that you definitely want especially in a physics textbook and other sciences as well are detailed drawings with nice little footnotes uh, description of what's going on in the diagrams and references in the text to the diagrams okay so these are my two main physics textbooks that i use okay and of course always have this guy handy now there's a little bit more to this okay physics is not just about reading the textbooks and understanding the concepts physics is about doing problems you need practice when you're learning physics right and a lot of these textbooks or any textbooks that you find should have a lot of solve problems examples that they walk you through the process of how they went about solving the problem and explain to you what the system is all about right because physics is really about different types of systems and systems are really about units so when you're studying physics what you really have to appreciate what you really have to wrap your head around are the units involved in that specific field that you're studying at the moment right and physics has multiple different fields that you can study okay now the best way to learn about these units to learn about these systems is to read the examples and follow through what the thought process was in the books in the textbooks right and a good textbook is going to explain to you why they did everything they did when they're providing you with an example of how to do something right and a good textbook is going to have supplementary problems questions at the back of each chapter with at least the answers in the back of the book if not the solutions of how they went about solving those problems okay usually though the questions they have in the textbook that you're studying are not enough or they weren't enough for me okay so when i was studying physics there is a series of books that that I ended up buying and I have these are the physics ones that I pulled out these are I don't know if these guys are around anymore right but these are Shum's outlines okay and what they are are basically here I'll read you the title for this this is the seventh edition this is Shum's outline series theory and problems of college physics and this is the same one college physics this is the sixth edition okay I did I, for some reason I didn't use this as much as the seventh edition right and let me read you what it says here it says uh, and this is by uh, P -p 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 frederick uh, this one is by uh, frederick bushet here let me bring this up so you see it right i don't know if these are these are around right now these series but um there's something called cole's notes i don't know i'm pretty sure cole's notes has physics as well but i'm pretty sure i've seen other types of series of books that have basically exercises and solutions just straight up exercises and solutions and summaries of each of the concepts for these books for these uh, uh, disciplines that are going to be showing you how to solve the problems right and this thing basically says including 833 solved problems and 998 supplementary problems that's what physics is about it's about sitting down and doing problems sitting down and having having a system explained to you and you having to think about what the problem is modeling that problem according to the functions the formulas that you know understanding it, understanding the units at play and being able to quantify that system to answer questions that's what these books allow you to do okay unfortunately this thing the the covers come undone right um and this edition is when did this one come out this one is in 1979 
edition, and I believe this one should be the 19. The sixth edition is 1961. Wow. So there was a, is this the same author? So fourth edition, check this out. This is how popular these things are, right? So the fourth edition of this came out in 1942. The fifth edition came out in 1946. The sixth edition came out in 1961, right? Okay. And if this is the same author, and it should be for some reason. Oh no, this is, check this out. This sixth edition of Shum's Outline, Theory and Problems and, uh, of College Physics is Daniel Shum B.S., right? Bachelor of Science. That's who was the main author of this, I believe. Okay. And it was edited by, edited by Carl W. Von der Merwu, Ph.D., <laughs> Production of Physics, right? So this one is Daniel Shum that came out with this book. Okay. And this one is the seventh edition, and it doesn't have the previous editions to this listed here. Actually, the previous editions has got copyright 1936, 1939, 1940, 1942, 46, 61, and 79. So I guess it's the same one, but this one, the author is credited uh, with Frederick J. Bush, PhD, right? It's credited by a different person. And these books, basically, they, you know, they have a nice table of contents, right, in general. Okay, or these ones did it anyway. They should have a nice index. They have a nice index, right? Which is exactly what you want right they have old school four place logarithmic tables <laughs> now that is awesome that is pure awesome right they have extremely important any good physics textbook is going to have your physics constants in there right you need the constants in there you need your factors for conversion to SI units. Okay, these are the international units. So you need a table like this in your physics textbook. Look for it. If your book that you're going to acquire or use to learn physics doesn't have this, put that book away. Or it doesn't have the constants. Or doesn't have the formulas. Now this one should have the formulas. Oh, Sean's outline actually usually have the formulas in each chapter, the summary of the formulas. Um, they'll have, uh, da, 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 da. they have the Greek alphabet, uh, prefix for uh, multiples of SI units. And these ones are pretty basic. You don't necessarily need this one. Okay. This is, if you know your mathematics, you should know how that works. Okay. Yeah, and this one doesn't have the formulas all of them in one area because there's so many disciplines in uh, in physics right so many different fields you can go into but here let me show you this one this is current resistance and ohm's law chapter 26 it's going to have the definitions of the words right it's going to have the formulas it's going to talk about the units right and additional formulas right in here and then solve problems which is fantastic right which is exactly what you want and then it'll have supplementary problems that you can do and the solve problems they're going to show you how they went about solving all of them either at the end of each chapter or at the end of the book okay so Shum's outlines is something that I used uh, in addition to the textbooks that I used to learn physics. Okay. 
And as I mentioned, uh, physics has uh, specific disciplines that you can go into, right? Like the physics textbooks, if you're learning them in grade 11, grade 12, even college physics first year, you're going to notice that there's so many different chapters that cover so many different things, maybe kinematics, dynamics, um, hydro uh, hydraulics, or electric circuits. And I studied a little bit of electric circuits, um, and I used the Schoen's outline. Um, I found the electric circuit stuff more difficult for me to grasp when I was learning physics. And there's different chapters that you're going to have a harder time with than other chapters, right? Like for me, kinematics, dynamics, just like many other people, kinematics people in general tend to find it easier to understand, grasp, than electricity, than fluid dynamics uh, or water flow, basically. Uh, that one I uh, tended to have a hard time with as well. But this one I really needed to, I, I wanted to understand. So electro electronic uh, circuits, and I can't remember why uh, I ended up grabbing this book. And this is sort of the same format of things, right? Now, once you learn, uh, initially when you're learning physics, right you're going to learn and initially getting into physics is difficult right i tell most of my students i find physics 11 way more difficult than physics 12 because physics 11 tries to encompass so much that you get overwhelmed with all the units and all the assumptions and all the laws and all the constants and all the names of the people involved and in coming up with these approximations really because that's what physics is is an approximation of the physical world around us right we're trying to understand so for me i tend to find the initial stage of trying to learn physics very difficult right but slowly once you get into the terminology and understand certain systems we don't constantly have to look up the units or look up the definitions of words and uh, constantly try to force yourself to visualize what's happening in a certain situation, right? Once you go deep into physics, once you start specializing in stuff, you go beyond these initial textbooks and you start going into more, much more complicated physical concepts, right? And there's a lot of books that I do have in my book collection where um, they're specializing in a certain type of physics, right? But one of the ones I'd like to show you, and it's basically a textbook for physics, but it's the next type of textbook you would get into, okay, that covers a fair bit of information, but is way more in depth and way more intricate and lays down the foundation for future uh, studies in physics, right? And again, this book is something we looked at in the video we put out when we said we we're going to talk about or how to read a textbook right where we put out uh, that video i actually edited up uh, editing it into two different formats a longer version and a shorter version right both of them sort of laying out the 20 steps that we had to reading a textbook i believe um, and this book is the physics textbook that we took a look at and it's uh, Feynman lecture right the Feynman lecture lectures on physics and this is uh, in volume number two right and I flipped through this book I haven't I, I really didn't go too deep into higher level physics other than specializing in physics required to do geophysics right and that's going very specialized and I have some geophysics books that um, once I graduated from the basic uh, physics the introduction from grade 11 12 first and second year physics we start really just delving into uh, physics tech textbooks that really just specialized uh, in geophysics right but so I didn't really get a chance to go into this too deep but this is a phenomenal book okay it's fantastic and this is Richard <laughs> this is Richard Feynman <laughs> right playing the bongos <laughs> right awesome and there's a video on him online uh, him playing the bongos okay I highly recommend and I highly recommend listening to his lectures and his philosophy on life if you've never have um, a fantastic teacher if you're looking for one okay so this book is fantastic as well if you get you know if you have the opportunity and, and at some point 
I plan on getting my hands on volume one and volume three of uh, Feynman lectures on physics. I don't have them in my collection, right? But you can tell that this thing's got detailed, detailed table of contents, right? Very nice table of contents. The drawings in this books are fantastic. Okay, here, here's one that's related to what I showed you before, right? Magnetic fields and whatnot. Okay, there is a ridiculous amount of information in this book. And if you're going into hardcore physics, where you need to really appreciate the mathematics and understand the systems beyond just the basic rudimentary level, which is basically the introduction, what I showed you with these textbooks. This is the type of textbook you want to get your hands on and just go deep into it, right? And this book, again, has got a nice index as well. So I just wanted to share that. I wanted to show you guys uh, these books. And I do have a couple of other textbooks, physics textbooks that made their way to me, but I really haven't used them. There were either books that uh, friends had that they were taking physics and they weren't gonna pursue it any further. And they didn't know what to do with the books. And they asked me if I take them, find them a home. And I said, for sure. And you know, if I come across any students that wanna study physics that want to get their hands on any book just as a hobby or they're thinking about going to physics i'm definitely uh, going to be passing these books on to them and hopefully they'll make use of it in the future for themselves right until then these are going to be sitting here uh, uh, and i might give give them a look if i find them uh, useful maybe we'll do a future video and add these as a physics book recommendation as well okay um so aside from that, uh, th th my apologies for taking so long uh, to come up with this uh, physics book recommendation or just basically show you what I use, the books that I use to learn physics, right? Um, for sure, let me know if there's any other videos that I've promised to do that I still haven't got to, and I will get to them. Thank you for the person that uh, reminded us a couple of times to put this video out. And again, the two main textbooks are this guy right physics for scientists and engineers with modern physics second edition survey okay and fundamentals of physics second edition extended by holiday and resnick okay don't forget uh workbooks right like shams outlines or Cole's knows for college physics and stuff like this. And if you're going to go into, you're going to delve deep into physics, uh, the Feynman lectures on uh, physics, uh, I found interesting, right? And at some point, uh, I will read them a little bit further. Okay. Aside from that, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting this work. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you're having a phenomenal, phenomenal day and i'll see you guys uh, in the next video bye for now